Well, it's upgrade time. Every year I try to upgrade something for the channel, for my work. Last year I upgraded the 3D printer, went from an Anycubic i3 Mega to a Prusa MK4S. Needed to make sure that my uh, models were accurate since I create 3D models for public consumption. I need to know that the models are correct, so I upgraded the printer. This year I'm upgrading the workstation. For the past five years, four or five years, I've been using a Darter Pro from System76. But this year I'm getting into Blender. I'm doing more motion graphics for the channel, as you noticed, uh, probably noticed the new intro for the electronics videos. That was all rendered on the new workstation, which is a System76 Gazelle sitting over here on the desk. And it's a bit more powerful. It's a modern or current Intel processor, 14 cores, multi-threaded. It looks to the OS like it's a 20 core chip. Maybe it's 12 cores, multi-threaded. Anyway, um, 16 gig of RAM and a uh, NVIDIA GPU along with the Intel embedded graphics. But anyway, this new machine is a lot more powerful, but it's also a lot more power hungry. Uh, it, its power brick is rated up to a max of 180 watts. Now, back when I built out the RV, uh, I, I, I knew I was going to be using solar power for as much as possible. I have an inverter, but I try not to use the inverter. One, because it's RF noisy with radio, and I do a lot of radio stuff. Uh, but two, uh, efficiency. Now, back when I first built out the RV, I did a test comparing a direct DC to DC converter with using the inverter and the supplied power supply uh, for my current laptop at the time. And I measured the efficiency difference. 9.24, well, 9.25, um, it's 9.246, so we round up. 9.25 watts, 9.25. Okay, so with the inverter to run the laptop, we were using 15.87. Uh, going directly to 19 volts, we were running 9.25 watts. So that's uh, that's quite an improvement. That's almost 50, well, that's around 60% of the power. Let's see, 100 divided by 15.87 equals that times 9.25, 58% of the power. Uh, so we have a savings of 42% in power usage by going directly to 19 volts versus using the inverter. So yeah, using a direct DC to DC converter is much more efficient. And that's important, especially uh, when I try to do as much as I can off solar, save on the electric bill. I'm, I'm at a friend's property now while I'm recovering from long COVID. So I'm plugged in, but I still try to use my solar for as much as possible to keep that power bill low. So the new laptop is uh, a lot more power draw. That old DC to DC converter, which was around 80 watts, I think, not enough. So what do you do? You go bigger. This is a 300 watt, 12 volt to 19 volt DC converter that I'm going to use for the new off-grid power supply. And it's going to need some noise filtering because these things are really noisy. So that's this project. I'm going to build an off-grid laptop power supply. You can duplicate this probably for most laptops. Um, most of them are going to be 20 to 19 or 20 volts input. Uh, if your power, if your laptop is a 20 volt input, you can still use a 19 volt. It'll work fine. It'll just draw just a tiny bit more current. So we're going to use this DC to DC converter and a couple of noise filters and make a new power supply for my new laptop. All right, here are the parts for my new PC power supply. This is a 300 watt DC to DC converter, 19 volts out with 12 volts in. So this is the heart of the matter. That'll take the, uh, sorry about that clunk. That'll take the uh, solar power and convert it up to 19 volts. On the input and the output of it, I've got one of these.
This is an RFI filter board that I looked at not too long ago. Works pretty well at the lower frequency ranges. And since these switching supplies operate in the hundreds of kilohertz range, most of the interference that might come off the power leads is going to be in the lower part of the HF spectrum. These filters should work fine. So there'll be one on the input, one on the output. The one on the input will be to keep uh, RF noise from this coming up from this thing from going out onto the power rail. Then I'm going to have a switch. I've got a big chonky toggle switch here that'll go on the 12 volt side. I've got some uh, four, uh, 12, no, 14 gauge red and black power stranded power wire. I'm going to use Anderson power poles connectors, which I have here. Um, here's a schematic, real basic, real simple. Uh, I'll have a 20 amp fuse on the input, and then the power switch, the RFI filter, the DC to DC converter, another RFI filter, and then a connector to go to the laptop. So those are my parts. I'm going to get started. The first thing I need to do is I need to come up with a bracket to mount all this. So to design my bracket to mount the power supply, of course, I went to my favorite CAD software, FreeCAD, and I designed up this little bracket design. Now the bracket is going to hold the DC converter right there in the center, and on either side of it will be one of the RFI filter boards. I also designed a little frame and mount to put a cooling fan over the top of the DC converter. Well, after some designing in FreeCAD and some 3D printing and some assembly work, the mechanical assembly is pretty much done. So this material that I printed this in, this is PCTG, which has a softening temperature somewhere around 178 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, way hotter than this module is ever going to get. So I'm not worried about this plastic softening at all. There's screw mounts here and here and down in there. One of the screw holes on the power or the uh, DC converter mount is open, and that's where I'll put the screw through to the wood. And the same on this side. There's one open there that I'll put a screw through to the wood. So it'll have four screws holding it up against the wall in there in my power cubby like that. Now I've put a 120 ohm resistor in series with the power lead on that fan, so it runs at about a third of its normal speed. It still moves plenty of air. This DC to DC converter is rated around 300 watts. At most, the new laptop under peak load is going to draw somewhere between 160 and 170. So maybe, maybe that much, maybe not. You know, we're not going to, probably not going to exceed half of the capacity of this thing under very brief peak loads. So it's not going to run very hot. My brand new Gazelle laptop ended up having a bad NVIDIA GPU in it, so I had to return it for exchange. In order to finish the video, I decided to do my load testing with the old Darter Pro. Okay, I am ready to do some load testing. I have a temporary input, and I've got my little meter on that input. I'll hook that up to... Uh, 12 volt power for actually 13.4 volt power from my solar input. And if we don't see any smoke, yay, the fan's running, no smoke, and it is drawing 60 milliamps at idle. Let's see what we got on the output. Let's see here negative side, positive side. 18.7 volts. Well, it's rated at 19, so I guess that's with intolerance. I should be able to put it under load, power up the laptop, and we'll see what kind of current draw we get on the uh, source. I've got the laptop plugged in. I double-checked the polarity <laughs> before I plugged it in, and it was correct. So right now the laptop is off. The little uh, power indicator is on, and we're drawing 90 milliamps, one watt. Let's power up the laptop and see what happens. There we go. 23 watts, 24 watts. It's going to cycle around while it boots up. Now this is the little Darter Pro that I've been using for the last four or five years. But I should be able to get a bit of a load out of it. 
we'll uh, start a render going in uh, Blender under Cycles, and that should hit all the CPU cores. Sorry for the delay. I'll probably have fast-forwarded through this. I'm going to set it to the Cycles render. 4,096 samples, so it'll take a while. And here we go, render image. I heard the fan slow down a bit. All the cores are cranking. We're drawing 5 amps on the 12 volt side. 65 watts. Let's see what the output voltage is doing. Looks like we're peaking at around 60 watts. Can I get the voltmeter in here too? Yeah, I'll have to cover it up temporarily. I just want to see how that output voltage is holding up. Uh, you can just see that on the camera. I can't really reach over to adjust it. But it's holding at 18.65, uh, so we only dropped a, about a half of, about 5 millivolts. So it's, it's holding the load. It's doing just dandy. Power module is ice cold. I wouldn't expect it to heat up. <laughs> We're not really... It's a 380 watt module. And the most the new laptop could draw at, at peak is uh, somewhere between 160 and 170 watts. So well within this thing's capabilities. As a load test goes, and a power on test goes, I would say this is successful. The power module is having no trouble at all powering the laptop. So the next step is to install it up into the uh, power box on my desk and um, get it wired out to the front panel. I got it installed up in my power box, as you can see here, mounted on the inside wall. And I wired it out to the front panel with a connector and the switch to power it on at will. And then I started a long render of the animation that you saw in the middle of this video. And while it was rendering, I opened the power box up and took some thermal images. And here we can see the power module during the render. It had been running for about an hour at this point, so it's definitely stable at whatever temperature it's going to run at. And the uh, DC converter is only at 92.3 Fahrenheit, just a couple of degrees above ambient, which at the present time that afternoon was 89.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So the DC power module is running very cool. The hottest thing in there is that little resistor that's dropping the voltage to the fan at 127.3 Fahrenheit. That's a carbon resistor and they have a safe upper limit operating temperature of around 300 degrees. And as you can see the uh, the module is just staying as cool as could be. So it's working quite well. So I should be all set. Now I can run the new laptop directly off the solar instead of using an inverter or plugging into the mains power. And that'll save me a little more on the electric bill. I hope you found that useful. Hey, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.